of adult uh, echocardiography and uh, I think it's a good idea to subscribe the channel so that the moment I post another new one you would be immediately notified. So uh, with the presentation this gentleman was 32 years old male and presented with the uh, echocardiography the history of a chronic liver disease. His upper GI endoscopy which was done about two weeks back showed grade 2 esophageal varices and there is a fever for last about 9 days. He has a dyspnea on exertion for last about 3 class 3 and it last about 5 days. There is no history of chest pain, sudden sweating indicative of a myocardial infarction. The blood pressure was 136 by 34 with a very wide pulse pressure and he had all other features of uh, collapsing pulse and the heart rate was about 134. You know that's an ECG and if you see in the ECG you see glaring left ventricular hypertrophy and some strain pattern but there is an ST elevation which is noticeable in V3 and V4 more marked than other leads. Apart from that there is a left atrial enlargement you can see and the heart rate is uh, sinus uh, tachycardia. Let's begin with the ECG, echocardiography first. On the left echo, this is the left parasternal long axis view and where you see this is the left ventricle which is dilated, this is the left atrium which is dilated and how do I say dilated? You can here only make a distinction that this is far larger or almost double the size of an aorta. And in the aorta mitral valve is looking fine except that it's not opening fully well which can be indicative of a severe aortic regurgitation here or could be an indication of marked LV systolic dysfunction. So now you see here the aortic valve, it's thickened, there are uh, echogenic, uh, uh, mixed echogenic foci which are kind of uh, prolapsing into the left ventricle and this is kind of typical of uh, vegetations or small masses on the aortic valve. Similar thing what you see in a Pykele 3 which is chamber view. You see the dilatation of uh, both left atrium and left ventricle. You see hypocontractility of the left ventricle and you see there is a, a, a mass which is prolapsing into the left ventricle and this is most likely a vegetation of the aortic valve. Again here you notice that the vegetation or the masses are actually attached to the, the annulus of the mitral of, of the aortic valve and you see this is prolapsing and the aortic valve is a bicuspid aortic valve with the thickened leaflets. Uh, on a three dimensional echo almost the same thing just uh, presenting uh, uh, thing in a different uh, format. Do you see these are the kind of uh, vegetations and then again you see this vegetation uh, which is a large vegetation me measuring about 2.4 centimeter in length and an about a centimeter and a half in the width and these are shaggy irregular uh, mass which is prolapsing into the left ventricle attached to the aortic valve and this is an aortic valve vegetation. But once uh, uh, we saw that echo and we were expecting a severe aortic regurgitation. But when we put the color Doppler on, we keep the neck with slip at around 70. You see there is uh, just a small aortic regurgitation based on the jet height and LVOT height. But when we reduce uh, uh, the neck with limit to about 40, which is actually recommended for both aortic and mitral regurgitation, you see a kind of a mild and a moderate at the best mild to moderate based on the LVOT height and the jet height. It is still less than 20% and if you go to the cross section you see these are two vegetations here but in the middle you see the area the LVOT area and you know area of the AR jet again it's, it's less than 20% of the LVOT area indicating not more than mild aortic regurgitation. That's exactly what we did not expect to happen. 
Now see this uh, left ventricle in a four chamber view. You see the left atrial enlargement. You notice that there is a regional wall motion normality of the uh, septum. You see the distal septal, the, all apical chambers are, you know, akinetic. Rest of the LV is, is globular and it's dilated, hypocontractile. Same you see in a three vessel uh, view. You see there is anteroseptal and apical segments which are kind of uh, akinetic. You can notice it here. So that means there is a regional wall motion normality which possibly could have happened because of embolization of the vegetations into the coronary artery causing a myocardial infarction. We have an LA strain pattern. LA was dilated. Uh, the LA maximum diameter, uh, the volume was 103 ml, which is markedly dilated, and 120 in a biplane one. And you see the globe, the GLS of the left ventricle also, particularly the reservoir uh, strain, is markedly reduced. Then when we do. Uh, the Doppler of the mitral inflow velocities and what we see here, we see uh, an, an, a very large E wave here and then we do a tissue Doppler on the lateral annulus and the medial annulus. You see the E prime of lateral and medial are also reduced and this is the the mitral E velocity is 172 with the mitral medial E wave of 11, lateral E wave of 17, but E to A ratio is markedly increased. This indicates not a good prognostic sign in patients with aortic regurgitation. But we notice something interesting, that's why I wanted to share this case with you. You notice this is the E wave and I'm going to label it here. Okay, that's the E prime, that's an A prime, and then you have this wave, all right? You notice this, okay, W kind of a wave, which is happening uh, in pre, uh, in uh, the diastole, in the early diastole, that is isovolemic uh, uh, relaxation of LV. This is happening in isovolemic relaxation of LV and this is uh, the the E wave E prime and this is the A prime and once you notice this has been a recently uh, published article which says that in case you have a tissue velocities which are biphasic this also indicates the left ventricular dysfunction and this is the uh, the velocities that is after the systolic is the post systolic velocities or biphasic in isovolemic relaxation period in this you have a biphasic phenomena normally you get this wave which is larger which is smaller than e prime and it is negative but in as, as compared to the pre systolic which is the isovolemic uh, contraction phase you get this uh, uh, pattern of uh, biphasic pattern where the majority of the component is upwards. In this patient what we saw and that's the study which says that in case these patterns are reversed then there is a higher risk of uh, heart problems in the future and in an indicative of a worse prognosis and heart failure with uh, reduced ejection fraction. In our case it was markedly increased. You know notice here on, the, on a Doppler, now I change the probe, I change the frequency and look at the flow, still it's not looking very severe aortic regurgitation. But if you notice here, the CW across the aortic valve, what do you notice here? There are two things what you notice here. One is that there is an aortic regurgitation with a rapid deceleration which indicates a rapid increase in LV and diastolic pressure. This is a very important marker of a severe aortic regurgitation. Even if the color Doppler was not supportive, you have a Doppler, continuous wave Doppler, which is showing the rapid deceleration of AR 
uh, envelop and this indicates severe aortic regurgitation. Second sign of severity of aortic regurgitation in the same uh, Doppler signal is that the intensity of the forward flow and the intensity or the amplitude of the regurgitation flow they are almost the same now the same kind of in density here same density here which indicates again a severe aortic regurgitation in a milder aortic regurgitation intensity of or an amplitude of air is less than the intensity or a thickness of the aortic forward velocity so in this patient these were the signs of a severe aortic regurgitation the color doppler itself if you had believed only color doppler you would have mentioned this as a mild aortic regurgitation and that would have been a mistake so please use doppler uh, and other parameters to make an assessment of AR clinically we did have patients with a wide pulse pressure we had a collapsing pulse and we had two D parameters indicating one was a fly meiotic valve you had a large LV and on the color Doppler parameter the jet ratios were fine uh, in this patient indicating mild but large PISA this also was not present in this patient what we had in this patient on a CW there was a rapid deceleration of AR velocities. We had an amplitude or a density of the AR envelope as dense as the forward flow which indicates the same volume of blood or a quantum of blood is regurgitating back as it's going forward which indicates a severe aortic regurgitation. And in this patient we could not demonstrate the diastolic reversal the patient was sick and uh, we could not get an uh, uh, suprasternal window to demonstrate uh, a reversed flow in the descending aorta now the lesson is fix all you know discrepancies before you report uh, a patient of uh, aortic regurgitation or a mitral regurgitation and never forget the clinicals they are very very important uh, you do not make any assessment of any patient without having a clinical with you. Good idea to subscribe to the channel so that the moment I post something new you would get uh, be notified. Thank you very much for watching this video. Keep learning.